Oh, hello. Origin, maybe, for Sean. Shawnee boy. Yeah, Michael. Morning, Mike. Not Sean, then. Oh, fine, Dave. Dave. And the big guy thinks it's time for you to fly solo. Yes. Oh, Dave. Dave. This is your shot. Good luck. It's not going well so far, to be fair. But I think he's doing brilliantly. <laughs> oh, oh. You're all suffering. And for that, I'm deeply sorry. He didn't do anything wrong, though. That we've got to, like, like, look, we've got to remember, he didn't do anything wrong, right? I know that I've, I've talked about sabotage. I'm not so sure anymore. Per, I, maybe, maybe. But what actually happened? We've already established that the Eleanor's got switched because of happenstance. What happened with Jason again? I forgot. I forgot. I did. I forgot. My bad. That's just, that's just my bad. All the same, we know Michael is not to blame, so he shouldn't be punished for this. Ah, that's the thing, I suppose. It's the thing of he was in charge of it and failed to bring a resolution that I guess is probably satisfactory. Do you know what I mean? Like, that is his job right now, and I suppose... I could see some stuffy upper management being like, oh, Michael. Yeah. But again, very unfair. But that is the theme. I feel like, you know, we've been getting so far. By the way, by the way, because people have been saying like, oh, it's going to blow your mind. It's gonna, everything's going to change. Right, this episode, which, sorry, I, it was a bad impression. I was not trying to make fun of everybody, anybody. It's just sometimes how I talk when I do impressions, okay? <clears throat> Soz, one of you said it that way, all right? Just, just, just hey, calm down. So I feel like I feel like we're moving towards a place of the good place and the bad place, the equilibrium, the the status quo, maybe getting broken. We shall see. I do wonder. Maybe maybe Eleanor goes on a crusade. I don't know. That's where my mind goes. This is truly the saddest day of my life. Oh. <laughs> But we've been seeing the cracks all season, so, in the status quo, so it would make sense. We're the ones who misled everybody and dragged you all into this mess, so... Oh, we're gonna do this, okay. We should go to the bad place. Agreed. Yes. <laughs> Judge Guy just said everyone here has done bad things. He did. Hey, hello. Let's look at this ethnically. <laughs> but we're bad. So you helping us was bad. Right, yeah. It's basic consequentialism. Uh, yeah. This is beautiful, by the way, Jason. Well done, mate. But, like, this is this is what I've been talking about. This is what I talked about. I don't want to rehash it, because I did. I had this conversation last episode. Yeah, can, can, there are consequences. I, I get it, but I don't buy that. Let, let, hang on, let me just, let, let's let Jason finish this. The morality of an action is solely judged on its consequences. The one time. Sure, the one time. Chidi's done worse stuff than me. He murdered Janet. True. Yeah, but we're getting into such messy territory, which was obviously absolutely on purpose, right? Because, again, I've been over this. He murdered Janet, yes. But you're forgetting the context of how that happened, right? It's not cut and dry. It isn't. But that's the thing. None of this is cut and dry. This is the problem with, in my mind, with, uh, with consequentialism, right? Is that, yes, there are consequences to their actions, right? But, okay, so I'm going to go back into exactly what he said, and there's a flaw in it. You guys help me and Eleanor, right? Right. But we're bad. We're bad. Mm. Look, this isn't a precedent set in the show. This is a precedent set in my mind, right? This is absolutely me. But again, I, I've been fighting for Jason and Eleanor's corner whole season. Not necessarily to say that they are the cream of the crop of humanity, morally, right? That's not what I've been fighting for. What I've been fighting for and, and my intent behind that has been that they are not the worst. They are not bad. Because he's like, but we're bad, so you helping us was bad. That sentence, in my mind, isn't true. Because it's like, and I, and I get it, and I get it. Because they're working on this thing of, for the purposes of where we are right now, we were supposed to go to the bad place, so we, we are bad. That's the logic, right? But I disagree with that. Which, again, there's no precedent in the show for that. Because the show is like, no, these are the rules, so this is... You know, I get it. The show is putting the pieces on the board for a philosophical argument based on consequentialism. I do get it. I just disagree on the, how the board has been set. That's what I'm saying. And also, you know, he's talking about this. So the morality of an action is solely judged on its consequences. Solely judged on its consequences. I just, consequentialism, I, I don't want to offend anybody, but that's a cop out to me. I, I just don't agree with that. I don't think you should. You can. You can judge an action based solely on its consequences. You can do that. Should you do that? I don't think you should, personally. I, I think it's lazy because, again, you're ignoring all of the other stuff. Do you know what I mean? It's a simple get out of jail free card. It's like, well, you know, the consequence was bad, so we should just punish them for that. And it's like, but you're ignoring the intent behind it. You're ignoring everything else they've done in their life. And again, I, I, I talked about not wanting to rehash last episode, but 
to kind of TLDR that, Chidi and Tahani, in my mind, to my mind, did not do a bad thing. And I get that you can throw like consequentialism at me and be like, but Tyler, and I'm like, yeah, sure, I don't buy that. I'm not satisfied by that type of thinking because I think it misses out on a lot. I don't think it's due diligence done when you are judging somebody. And I get that that's my opinion. Yeah, so sorry, uh, I disagree that Eleanor and Jason are automatically bad. I know that that's how they've been set up in the show. So I get where where he's coming from. But I, I disagree with that for everything that I've talked about this entire season in regard to those two. And, and more particularly with Jason, the last like two episodes when I was kind of contrasting him with uh, Mindy and the way that I, I think he's been presented to us as someone who doesn't really know what he's doing and, and doesn't really understand the gravity of what he's doing. And, and, and I think the intent behind it from Jason's point of view. Uh, again, I'm not going to rehash that. I just, uh, yeah, I don't think Jason Jason is as bad, for example, as maybe someone like Mindy, who has been judged to be in the, the medium place. Again, well, I'm talking myself in circles because we're getting back to the place of like the status quo is, is broken. I don't think it's very well put together. But sorry, sorry. Uh, this could be a, a meaty episode, me a meaty video. I apologize. But uh, we should, I, I should let this play out uh, and see what Chidi got to say. Because I guess, I guess Chidi is going to maybe argue it from, from that perspective. We'll see. We'll see. He murdered Janet. He killed my wife. I was trying to stop you from doing it. Yeah. <laughs> and this is the thing. This is what's compelling, I suppose, about this is that consequentialism taken into account. Jason is better than Chidi because of what he just said. That is true. And like I say, I fundamentally do not agree that the Janet thing, like Chidi got in the way. Jason was going to do that. The reason Chidi got in the way was in essence to prevent Jason from doing it. That's the context of that situation. So it's like, I can't sit here knowing what I know, having seen that scene and how it played out and say Chidi is worse than Jason. And actually Chidi stopped him from doing that. If you stop someone from doing a bad thing and do the bad thing yourself, does that make you a bad person? That's an interesting question. I don't think it does. It maybe makes you a stupid person because you're liable to get punished for that in place of them. And then, you know, you've got to ask yourself from Chidi's perspective, was it, was it worth it, mate? You know, because Jason, if the people in power wanted to argue it that way, the way Jason is, Chidi's going to the bad place. And I suppose that's free will. That's, that's, that's decision making at play, right? That was Chidi knowing the consequences, knowing that that could happen. He made that decision all the same. Me sitting here apathetically watching, judging it from outside of the situation. I don't think it's as cut and dry as that. And I'm in a very special place where I, I can look at it and, you know, I, I do almost have that uh, omnipresence of seeing all of these uh, events play out and having everything there, the board kind of there so I can judge as fairly as I can. Where I come down on this is that, no, I disagree, Jason, actually. And John, you are leaving. Is Jason not John, you- Which is why you belong in the bad place. I feel like it's a matter of time before they all get together and go like, why are we even talking about this? We're arguing this ethically as best as we can and there are answers for all sides. How is the good place and the bad place not accounting for any of this? I feel like this conversation ends up getting to them to a place of, this makes no sense. And we were married in a legal ceremony. It was not legal. <laughs> and by the way, I should say, I should say, it's a testament to the show that they have presented this episode and built up to this episode in the way that they have, because l they have got now this, this, like I say, this mess of ethics and morals where you can argue it from this way, this way, this way, this way, this way, right? So many different ways. Uh, and that's what makes it interesting. I can never do that on Earth. This place truly is paradise. <laughs> Bet they're plotting against us. Eleanor wouldn't do that. Bless him. I'm frightened. What's gonna happen to me when Jason and fake Eleanor go and wither to honey? Mm, that's an ultimately selfish way to think about it, actually, from Tahani's point of view. Well, it's been real, dog. I feel like I failed you. Don't ever think that. You did great, mate. She's come on so far. Goodbye forever. I will miss you so much. Mm hmm Yeah, Tahani. Surprisingly cold, but she's frightened. I get it. Which is also interesting because, like, you know, under pressure, under fear of this, in, in a tight situation, she's doing the selfish thing. I wonder if in life, if Tahani had been put into those kinds of situations more often, would she have done the bad thing? Because I do feel like, I, you know, we've talked about this a little bit before, but I think because of her privileged upbringing and the uh, chances she was given and, and, and took and, you know, good on her. But she was given the best in life and she was give, given uh, the best opportunity in life and I don't think from what I've seen at least I'm not saying she didn't you know have have adverse um, circumstances to deal with but I haven't seen 
that and, and, and her life how it's presented been presented to us as the audience wasn't that and so I wonder if if the circumstances of her birth had been different would she have not got to the good place considering like I say this this moment here and the self that she went quickly to the selfish I'm going to the bad place I'm taking one of the slots dude you don't love me this will never really be my good place it can still be a good place. You, you're trying to, what? You're trying to go to the bad place for that? I'm sorry. Way to, sorry, sorry. A little bit like way to stake your identity on loving a man. Have a little bit of individuality for you. Do you know what I mean? You can still have a nice time and it's, sorry, that seems so weird to me. That seems so weird to me. I realize some of these reactions are invalid in a certain way, but I'm keeping them in just because I think before the reveal, the show does everything it can to breadcrumb you there. Showing how Tahani might not be so good, how real Eleanor has no worth without a man, even though we know she was supposedly a very independent, strong woman. There's an evil look Michael does that is played for a laugh. I laughed. It's interesting on the rewatch how they're still planting seeds for the truth but face it this is your mistake mm-hmm i agree with you sean for once which is unfair he did his best but he didn't do the job when he found out he should have been like right you straight to the bad place let's swap which that the problem again problem's not michael necessarily it's the institution it's always the same come up with the design we move on to the next one we never even get to be there to see how fun it is michael yes beautiful Okay, that's what you meant by different. Okay, fine. Go further though, mate. I get it. He's doing the thing where he's like, I'll go down. This is the thing though. It's establishing Michael as a, a revolutionary almost, right? He thinks outside the box, thinking for himself. Maybe the change in the status quo comes from Michael. And she's only going down there because she thinks that I don't love her. Chidi, yeah, hello. The point is, if she's going down there because of me, I'll never be at peace. Okay, no, that's not the answer either. No. I'm going. What? Now you're trying to replace Chidi? <laughs> Chidi and I are going to go together. We oh God, yeah. I love you. Oh God, guys. You realize the bad place is not some sort of couples retreat, right? Yeah, we're just seeing that there's no answer for any of them. And I do, I feel like we're getting, we're gonna, we're, we're, we're getting closer to a place where we're all like, there's no perfect choice. None of this is good. How is Eleanor the calm level voice in this situation? Cause she has been. Oh, guys. Good on her, go on. You Go on. Holy mother. Okay. I'm interested. Mikey, Sean. Okay. Is she going to argue it? Chidi and I are going to go to the bad place. What? Go on. Point of order. I don't accept this offer. Do you not? Ga, 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 ga. You said any two of us. It's me and Chidi. Let's do it to it. Michael, I just found an obscure precedent in the rules that might just save everyone. Beaut. No, no, no. Don't need it. Okay. Confidence. Uh, I'm going to trust okay. you, Eleanor. Bambi Jan, no, just, just stay there though. Just stay outside. Don't go far. It took me a while to figure it out. I thought to myself, man, this is torture. Mm -hmm. They're never gonna call a train to take us to the bad place. They this can't. is the bad place? Because we're already here. This is the bad place. What? Okay. <laughs> oh, man. What? I can't believe you figured it out. Wow. You ruined everything, you know that? Eleanor, you really suck. Beautiful. Okay. So he was trying to, his bold new plan was supposed to try and get them, like trick them into thinking they weren't in the bad place when they were. I mean, this, this calls into question, like we don't know anything anymore. I don't know anything. Was the medium place really the medium place? Was Trevor, is it all the bad place? Do you know what I mean? Tahani tortured Jason by constantly trying to get him to talk. Jason tortured me. <laughs> which was torture for Chidi because he was- Yeah. We've been torturing each other. And everything Michael has done has made at least one of us- uh, <laughs> He played us like a fiddle. Hey, I, this is the thing. I was calling him out when he was on about Chidi and his paper. That wasn't very nice at all. I could have, I should have gone further with that. That's fair. I don't care if you don't love me. I love you. <laughs> they know this is the bad place. Eleanor figured it out. Oh my god. Oh man. Beautiful from Eleanor, by the way. Like we gotta give we gotta give that up. Damn it, Eleanor. <laughs> do you remember what I told you when you predicted you could do this for a thousand years? <laughs> I present to you the perfect recipe for So this is just hell. There's no god place at all. An afterlife where they Oh, is that guy too? Hang on, how many of them? How many of them? I don't recognize any of those. 
Got Michael 2.0 in the background. Who's this? Who's this guy? Even getting them to do simple things like pulling out each other's teeth is like I can't think of the right. <laughs> Come on. Because they won't even know that they are doing it. Oh, I am disappointed in Michael. I do quite like this shift for him as as well. The fact that he was evil all this time, but I uh, it's a shame. He was such a little uh, cinnamon roll, wasn't he? <sighs> I don't feel, by the way, I don't feel that duped. It makes absolute sense. Like, I'm not, like, I was shocked, sure. But I, I kind of got to it a, like a second before Eleanor, which you're, you're meant to. I'm sure everyone else did too. But like, there's been stuff wrong all season. So do you know what I mean? I, I, like, I'm not, now that I know, I'm like, I'm not that surprised. It's a good twist. It's a really good twist, by the way. That's not me trying to be like, oh, you know, it's a good, it's a good twist. But that's what I mean. I think they, they seeded it really well. And I think seeding that in the guise of morally, this makes no sense. There's so many plot holes and loopholes and, 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 and so many like webs of ethics here do you know what i mean like you should have really been asking the question like how how in the good place is this does this all exist right yeah yeah so like it was seeded so well i even stole a good place janet we can use right i even stole a good place janet that was so that's confirmation that the good place does exist this is just an iteration of the bad place right and they're just trying to do it differently interesting okay you'd be lucky to get six months out of this insane gambit hey sean called it it's not been long has it this is a 14 million point plan <laughs> <laughs> oh god i thought we reserved the conference room todd we have it until three <laughs> everyone else in this neighborhood except for you four really everyone in this neighborhood everybody is one of us that's wild we just create fun scenarios designed to torture you that's a lot of work man that's so much work for so little reward the idea right do you know what i mean like you're trying to sell this plan on like they, it just does it for us a thousand years they just torture themselves oh help that's what you, that's so much more manpower dude it, like surely you just put people in the bad place then you just torture them that's it that's the bad place right and and everybody else is just doing their thing right that's efficient if you're gonna have it you do it that way right that's automation this is the thing this is the thing we're getting to it like an automation conversation which is really interesting right ah uh, i'm like do, do i go into this because this is such a big digression it's not like super relevant but also like kind of because like i have some thoughts on automation okay it should be a good thing it should be a good thing but what happens when things get more automated our jobs no anger up in air because people lose their jobs and validly validly so by the way i'm not making fun of people for that i think that's fair but that's my point is that it should be a good thing when things get more automated because that means that people are freer on paper theoretically humanity don't have to do that job anymore it frees up more people to live their life how they want to as opposed to it being just that job right because we as a society need people to do that job automation should should automatically be a good thing but it's not why is it not because the systems that we have in place in society do not allow for people to be unemployed right that's why people there is an outcry again validly so absolutely of our jobs there's less jobs you as the government don't look after us when we don't have a job not everybody i, I know that you know benefits exist and there's there are systems in place but there's also like a huge social stigma being on on benefits right but that should be the goal the goal should be humanity individual humans living their life in ways that they want to and they should be able to find out whatever that is for themselves and so it's like i'm like a big advocate of like automation is a good thing or it should be a good thing but it's only a good thing in theory unfortunately right now in the time we're living in right now and unfortunately it, it does it means that we're so far away from i i feel like a, a world that is much happier because we don't have the systems in place to make ourselves happier to find our humanity right we make things harder for ourselves when we could do things more efficiently instead you know michael is like no let's get everyone involved let's take up more manpower it doesn't make sense to me it's not efficient right the system you had in place previously was more efficient i think that is the case for a lot of things that used to be better actually surprisingly than they are now sorry i, I should stop the automation conversation there because i will just talk about this for the next half an hour because it's a huge conversation and honestly traces itself back to to capitalism and uh, especially the version of capitalism that we have now that just isn't isn't sustainable and, and isn't good isn't good for us because socially economically right now the good thing we should be striving for automation in the jobs that we we don't want to do isn't a good thing and would be a actively would be a bad thing for us if we did that because people wouldn't be able to subsist and, and the governments that we have in place don't account for it the goal today is not to get people out of jobs it's always to get people working get people back in work right you know contributing to the economy and all this stuff and it's like you realize that we created the economy all of these systems we have in place 
you know, taxes, they're human inventions, right? It's, it's the way we govern ourselves. But this is the thing, it's too big a conversation, right, to, to dismantle it and, and talk about it because people are going to come back at that and be like, taxes exist for a reason. And I get that they do, absolutely, right? Like, I'm talking about changing things from the ground up, which in this day and age, the, the slightest change is impossible. Never mind grand foundational changes to the way, the very way that we live life and the very way that our cities, economies, societies are made, right? Like, the, this, that's huge, right? Everything that I'm kind of talking about is, is theory, unfortunately, because I think we should be, as humanity, striving towards a better existence for ourselves. And sorry, it, that that little thing there, that little thing there, made me think of that, and it's sad. The allegory with our world there is is very strong. Vacation from your- They're walking, they're at each other's throat. <laughs> you play Bart, a former private eye. This is so much effort, dude. How is this better? Well, I guess that's the thing, it's funner. That's what it, this whole shtick is like, this is more fun for us. <laughs> Which, in a weird way, is how jobs should be. You know, to, to <laughs> if we're not getting rid of them, maybe the next best thing is to make the jobs, I mean, you know, it's always the advice, right? Choose something you love and you'll never work a day in your life. Making jobs more fun maybe should be the next best thing. I, I just feel like that's, you know, fundamentally not, not tackling the root of the problem. It's, you know, plastering over it a little bit as opposed to dealing with it. But anyway, so on the flip side, the plan kind of works, I suppose. But yeah, I don't know. Not quite for me. Then it all started Go off the rails. When I confessed, you had no idea I was gonna do that. Yeah. That came out of nowhere. Nice. I definitely underestimated how effective Chidi was gonna be teaching you to be good. I wanna know why Chidi and Tahani are in the bad place. Can we have that conversation? We didn't anticipate that Janet would fall in love with Jason. That part is real. That's sweet. I like that. Something was real. I know why Jason and I were sent here, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. We're having the conversation. Didn't you raise like a thousand dollars? Sixty billion. Oh. Uh, oh, but it didn't matter because my motive. I see, and we have learned that intent matters. I didn't care about helping the people I raised the money for. Okay. Stick it to my sister. I see. My only real goal was to snog Ryan Gosling, which I did. Good on you, mate. A couple of times, actually. Beautiful. Hey, you liked what you, you liked it. There's something you don't know about me. Almond milk in my coffee. No. Dingus. <laughs> you hurt everyone in your life with your rigidity. Ah, very interesting. I missed my mom's back surgery because I had already promised my landlord's nephew that I would help him figure out his new phone. I made everyone miserable. But this, but yeah, you made everyone miserable, but your intent wasn't to make everyone miserable. I feel like him and Tahani prove the discrepancy again, though, with, do you know what I mean? Like, I, I get Tahani if you're going on the intent thing, right? Because again, we've, we've been shown that the intent is more important, that matters. Chidi's intent wasn't to miss his mum's surgery. His intent was to do the right thing. Like a hot, rich fraud with legs. I might legit be into Tahani. Hey man, fair play here. Yeah. We improved each other. Yeah, you did. Became a team. Yes. And not being funny, maybe that is a better system. Just putting it out there than what you had because you weren't improving anybody the way you used to do it. The only thing you succeeded in was bringing us all together. Beautiful. My big mistake was bringing you all together. Oh no. Isolation. Next time. I'll spread you out so it's more of a slow burn. I'm going to uh, erase your memories. Oh god. Oh my god. Is next season going to be the same thing and we're going to like be watching as the audience being like, are they going to work it out? Can they work it out? That would be fun. Make a few changes and start over. That is horrifying. Wish me luck. My goodness. How do you break out of this place? Because... <clears throat> Jason? What? What's up? Ah! <laughs> let, me, let me just tinker a little. Okay. He's got another chance. So yeah, next season, is it going to be... Because uh... it would change. It would completely change season two. Because we would all know it's the bad place. And so cheating time... Do you know what I mean? The status quo would be changed. What am I right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Quick, quick, quick. Beautiful. Janet. Again, Eleanor. Eleanor is the custodian, the leader of the group. Coming up with the plans. Good on Eleanor. You can't eat anything, right? Correct. Open up. <laughs> Do your worst. Do you know what, Michael? Yeah, basic. Uh, <laughs> this is great. This is great. Yes, let's do it again. But now as the audience, you know more. That's beautiful. Come on in. Because now you're going to be watching, right? I'm going to be watching for all of it. Oh, we're speeding up. I see a chimpanzee and a baby Okay, tiger. good, I like it. That's how you're going to feel every day. I feel like he's playing it more sinister, but maybe it's just because I know more. I know the context. I'm Chris Baker. Oh God. I'm your soulmate. Jesus. And I was a mailman? Of course you were. Really? Set him on fire. Sorry, that no, was the shirt. I'm, apologies. Who are you? I'm Janet. I think this- Beautiful. What is she? What is she write? 
Uh, oh, that's very sweet. The fork is a cheat. Mmm. <laughs> All right. Beautiful. Hey, I tell you what though, I did. This is the thing. I got my, my shaking up of the status quo. Just the characters don't quite know it. You know what? Look, I talked about the twist. I like it. I think that's brilliant. I think that's great. A beautiful, beautiful. And I think the way now we've got a reset, we as the audience know more than the characters. Now they're going to have to figure it out. And it's like, what's the end goal? Now it's a case of, do they break out? But can they break out? They have no power here. If Michael can just reset them like that, I, this is the thing. Michael went to Sean and if it doesn't work again, something's gonna change, something's gonna be different. Cause he was like, you got one more chance if it, if it doesn't work now. So sets the precedent for, again, if it doesn't work out, which I imagine it's not going to, right? It's gonna fall apart again in a different way, perhaps, especially considering the notes and GD. But yeah, it's so weird. It's so weird that Michael, this character that you know, that you build up a relationship with over the course of the season, isn't what you think and actually is the opposite. That's so interesting. Kind of sad as well, right? You know, the Michael that I knew doesn't exist, Jesus. But um, brilliant twist, brilliant twist. And I think offers you really fun, right? Fun, but also interesting ways to go into season two and see more sides of these characters. You've established them and last season doesn't get erased necessarily because all of the progress that Eleanor, for example, made and Jason made were just accidents, right? That's extra. And now we know as the audience, that's who they are, who they can be. Going into season two, as much as they've been erased, we know that that is who they are and that is the capability they have. Do you know what I mean? I don't feel cheated. I don't feel like a season's been erased. I feel like we had that season and now because of the twist, this foundation has been added onto with the same pieces, with the potential for the same, but to get there in different ways. And also with an ending that I don't know what that's going to be. When it inevitably fails, which I feel like it's going to, again, from Michael's end, right? The plan is gonna fail. That's gonna be the last straw. Sean's gonna be like, you had another chance, you failed. And then I guess we're gonna get something different. And like I say, the question is, can they ever get out of this? Is the bad place inevitable? Uh, you know, once you're there, is that it? This doesn't necessarily erase the fact that if these are the rules, uh, this is the thing, perhaps that's the point in that some of the things that they were get, getting judged by were a joke, right? It was like, how is that a good thing? Because it wasn't, right? It, it was fake. That makes more sense now, right? But I do wonder, that's my question, is what is the system for the good place and the bad place? Have we seen it or is it different to what we've been taught it is? But yeah, those are questions for season two to answer. So we shall see. But that is the video. That was Michael's Gambit episode 13. Thank you so much for watching. Links down below if you want to support me. Thank you, genuinely, as always, to my uh, patrons and YouTube members as well. Early access down there if you want to go check it out. But other than that, watch this video right here to keep good times rolling. Subscribe for all the good place stuff coming your way. And I'll see you soon.